It's another beautiful, wonderful evening. Friends, welcome to the Porter's Gate online broadcast. If you're able to join me this evening, well, it's a great delight. Or whatever your time zone may be, I want to welcome you once again to another live broadcast. My name is Isaiah Phillips Akintola. It's an exciting season for us in the nation of South Africa and, of course, in the continent of Africa. God is speaking to us. God is bringing his voice to us in such a clear, distinct manner. And we are excited to be part of those whom the Spirit of the Lord has aimed to be his spokesman in this season and time. I tell you, I'm so excited in my spirit. I can't wait to see what is about to unfold all right, as the Lord begins to, you know, bring stones in the restoration of his divine intention for this season. Uh, I, 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 I have this feeling that, you know, something is about to break loose in the spirit. I just have this feeling in my, you know, in, a, in, my, in my spirit, man. But I want us to pray, uh, you know, this evening as we begin to look into the next thing God has in stock for us. Excuse me. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We rejoice in this glorious day, in this brand new day once again. Thank you, Father, for the way you have been coming. You've been speaking to us. You're building, yes, your house. A house that, can, that cannot be hindered, that is indestructible. Yes, wisdom is building a house. We have become, oh God, that order of a house. We have become that stone that you are using to build it. We are the house that you are building, yet we are the instrument you are using to build. So we thank you once again, once again, Lord, oh God, this evening as we gather as a nation before your footstool, just as in the day where Elijah on Mount Carmel gathered, yes, uh, at the people. Father, we thank you that your will, purpose, and counsel will stand. Your intentions, oh God, will continue to advance. Your purposes will continue to move. Nothing will hinder. Nothing will stop. You said you will build your house. You will build your church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail. Thank you for granting us insight. Thank you for the revelation that is awakening our heart to become, yes, men and women. Posture in this position of the bad canal where you will bring forth a nation a people will come forth oh god through this auspice we thank you your, your your word has given us yes father yes they 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 the calling and the mandate yes that nothing will be able to stop because jesus you said i will build my church and we could remember that when you made that statement, it was when you were about to enter the place that is called Caesarea Philippi. 
the word declares that as you stood at the gate of Caesarea Philippi, you asked the question, who do men, who the society says the Son of Man is? And they were given all kinds of narratives, all kinds of definitions and descriptions. And you turn to your own church and say, but you, who do you say? That is what matters. It's not the opinion of men that matters. It is what your church, yes, is able to say and identify about who you are. And we say, Lord, that we have become a company of people. Yes, amidst the bunch of the nation of South Africa and the continent, that we are able to identify who you are. We say truly, like Peter said on that day, you are Christ, the son of the living God. You always say, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, Peter, but my Father in heaven. He said, and I say to you, <laughs> and I say to you, hallelujah, you are Peter. A change of identity becomes the foundation of the building of your church. Peter was identified in alignment of, your, of his true nature before you began to build and if we have come, Lord, to that position today as a company of Peter, whom is able to identify you and whom you are able, yes, to redefine. No longer pe 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 Petra, you have become a Petrus. No longer Petra, excuse me, you have become a Petra. And on this massive rock, you said, I will build my church. The same rock, O oh God, that was said, wisdom build a house. The same rock, O oh God, that that wise man built his house, that no storm, that nothing, no power, no influence, no attack, no, no position of, 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 the, of the governing principality could shake. You said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail. Thank you, Lord. That because there is a church that represents your voice in the nation of South Africa, this land will stand. Your will and counsel, O oh God, will continue to advance because there is a church, because there's an ecclesia that you have shaped, that you have defined, that you are still building. We thank you. We honor you. We glorify you. We praise you this, this evening, O oh God, because we can see a change taking place. We can, we can feel the change that is taking place. We hear the sound of a new day. We hear the sound of a new beginning. We hear the sound, O oh God, of jubilee. The sound of a new order of a company of men and women, O oh God, ready as you have said to the prophet Agar. Tell the people to be strong. Walk for I am with you. Do not be afraid. Lord, we have come out of the old. We have come out of the narrative of the past. We are not looking back. We are no longer a monument. We have become a movement within this state, within this order, within this project called South Africa. Lord, you're changing the narrative. You're shifting us into a new realm, into a new sphere. We're coming to the position where the mountain of the house of God is being elevated. That in this glorious day, oh God, they will come, they will troop, yes, to this place where we will teach wisdom, where we will teach the nations your will and your counsel. That from this order, as you begin to birth a new reality of your intention, we declare that wise men will begin to come, oh God. God, they will troop into this atmosphere. Your name once again will be glorified that the things that the enemy yes, as meant to bring destruction you are using the same very thing to build. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord for the capacity and the grace, the wisdom of Nehemiah. Now out of the ashes, out of the burnt bricks and, and the broken walls and the burnt gate, he was able to rebuild a nation for you. Lord, we are that company. We thank you. Our eyes, more than ever before, yes, is set on this. Thank you, Spirit of God, that you are awakening us to the reality of your prophetic demand. Touch our lips once again. Make us ready. Give us grace, capacity. Give us a heart that is unresolved, unstoppable, unmovable, unshakable. Thank you. You said you will shake everything that can be shaken. But there is one thing that cannot be shaken. We receiving a kingdom. Thank you. 
We honor you. We celebrate you. We glorify you. And we can declare today that there, that there shall be, oh God, a manifestation of a company of people whom you have called to be your ecclesia, rising up out of this new day, out of this new order, bringing forth, oh God, yes, your prophetic demand and counsel, going forth in the authority of your spirit and Lord, releasing into the atmosphere the spirit of possibility. Yes, Father, we declare that we are releasing the spirit of possibility because indeed you have given to us what it takes. Hallelujah. We glorify you. We can reimagine. We can reimagine possibilities. We are reimagining possibilities. We are reimagining changes. Ha ha ha. We are reimagining, yes, oh God, creativity, innovation. Thank you, Father, for the spirit of the craftsman. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the spirit of craftsmen, apostolic craftsmen. Yes, capacity to build your intentions and your desire within the structure of this order of a people called South Africa. We thank you. We honor you. That it's not by might, it's not by power. It's not of man that, that, that wills or run is of the Lord that shows mercy. Thank you, Lord, that we will not be quiet. You say you will make mention of the Lord. Give him no rest and give yourself no rest. That we will not, oh God, go into rest. We will not go into hibernation. We will not go into silence. We refuse to be silent. We will continue to speak at the gate. We are gatekeepers. <laughs> we are called the gatekeepers. We are kings, makers. Yes, Father. We are portals, watchmen on the wall. We do not go into slumber. We take our position as regiments. We take our position as gatekeepers, as leaders, oh God. Father, we thank you. Today, we declare that there's a shift that is taking place over the realm of this land, over the realm of this nation, from the north to the south, from the east to the west. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you, Father, for craftsmanship. Thank you for the spirit of technocrats. We honor you. We rise up. We build a new nation. We thank you, O oh God, that yes, what you have ordained and desire shall become a reality. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Friends, once again, I want to welcome you. We believe God that our proclamations and declarations are already shifting things in the realm of the spirit. That is how spiritual things operate. God, God does not save by multitude. If he can find few who understand his heart, who understand amen, his desire and his intention, and whose life are aligned to what he wants, they become a conduit that he can use, amen, to bring forth his intention. The scripture says, amen, it is God who is at work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So we, we, we are not, amen, we are not some uh, irrelevant voice out there, no. No. Uh, it was the prophet that said that those who are with us are more than they that are against us. Friends, these are exciting seasons. And the urgency of the Spirit, once again, has caused us to come to a point where heaven is removing the scale that have, you know, hindered us from seeing into the prophetic desire and intentions of God that we've been granted sight and therefore we cannot but to prophesy. Today we are looking into how to engage, amen, in the concept of the reconstruction or the rebuilding, all right, of a nation. There are prophetic words that have been spoken, that have been released 
over the continent, but in particular over this nation. You know, like I know if you are watching me, all right, that this nation has been a nation the enemy has sought to destroy. For many years, it's like South Africa is like the, the story of the children of Israel who have been in bondage for 400, you understand, and 30 years. Many of the things that we're dealing with needs to be understood in the context of the history of this nation. All right. If you look at the crime, you know, the, the inner crime, you know, the, the confusion, you know, the issues of a lack of direction, lack of vision, insecurity. If you look at all the kinds of things that has been happening in this nation, you can only, you know, understand that when you, you know, take into cognizance where this nation is coming from, the kinds of things. This is a nation that has been raped, that has been almost brought to the point of destruction and a nation that rose up and fought away all right to get liberty and freedom and in the context of, of all of that all kinds of things were left all right yes untouched and you know on 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 unanswered okay and uh, rather than we have men and and people that are called of god leaders that are called of god who have who have been built or trained with apostolic wisdom, grace, and capacity to then begin to rebuild, you understand? After, you know, 1994, what we saw was men running and seeking to build, you know, all kinds of things for themselves, just like the children of Israel. Remember when they came back, all right, from captivity, the scripture says they went back building their own what? Building their own house. And they said to themselves, it is not time to build the temple of God. <laughs> And God sent the prophet. He said, go ask them. Is this the time for you all right, to build your own panel houses while my own house is left amen, in a state of ruin? And that is what we've seen. That, that is what, in fact, that is a reality. That is what happened. And because the house of God was neglected, amen, the entire society, you understand, was ravished and, 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 and destroyed everything that ought to define you know you know security joy peace tranquility you know the right you know sense of living sane mindset all right we're thrown into the trash can you know and 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 and, and from that point we begin to see rather than the nation rising to advance into a day and fulfill god's intention in fact what was fought for in terms of you know the liberation had been left behind we've seen leaders who have just sought to plunder the, the you know the, the the economy and just enrich themselves and, and of course you know that is what you know selfishness does but yet rather than you know we seeing a church rising up and taking the lead you will also see a church of course that is insecure because the church itself is part of the society and so we see a church that is seeking all right to be popular to become known you understand to build large to build mega things while the nation was not built and it's for this reason that we're saying, no, it is time for us to begin to deal with issues, all right, of leadership reform. We want, amen, you know, a, a transformative leadership. We've been talking about for almost two weeks, transformational leadership. Transformational leadership will speak into the concept of, you know, rebuilding and bringing the nation back to that order of, you know, a, a, a divine intentions and counsel. All right? And I believe that as God is, you know, laying this as a burden in my own heart to speak into this aspect, because if we don't deal with certain things, all right, yes, from, from you know, the ground root up, it, it will be very difficult. Even if you have, you know, good people, you know, at the aim of leadership, all right, the, 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 the issues, the, the issues that has kept, that has held back, that has stopped, frustrated, all right, the rising of the nation will still be there. So we need as a church, more than ever before, all right, the, 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 the South African society needs the church to rise up with the kind of grace, resource, and capacity that have been given to her, all right, to begin to address certain things that ordinary people, amen, in politics, 
in government cannot handle. You know that that is what has happened through history, even in the Bible, that there were things that, okay, kings could not address. The kings were limited, all right? And that's why God will always align kings with, with prophets to give clarity, to give direction, to assist the kings to build effectively. One of the reasons why David was able, amen, to do the kind of things that he did, that he was able to succeed, you understand, as, as a leader, is because he had, amen, he has prophets in the court who were able to, you know, you know, minister to him, who were able to counsel him, who were able to correct him, sometimes rebuke him, you understand? Yes, that is the kind of leadership we need. And that's why God is, you know, giving us this kind of insight and direction that if we're going to advance, if we're going to see, all right, you know, a new South Africa, if we're going to see a prosperous South Africa, if we're going to see, you understand, an advancing South Africa, if we're going to see a South Africa that is healed, restored, all right, and is advancing into, yes, the next frontier of God's prophetic intention. There are certain things we need to do. There are certain things we need to understand. There are certain dimensions that must come to play all right and those are the things that we've been addressing now let me start by you know just you know introducing the scripture to you again proverbs 24 i love what proverbs 24 all right you know brings all right to the full proverbs 24 3 says by wisdom i want to use the word house as a nation by wisdom a nation is built and by understanding all right it is established I want you to know what establishes a nation. It is understanding. Understanding means that we have insight. Understanding means that we know what to do, how to go about it. You understand? All right? That we're not just doing trial and error. That we're not confused. Understanding means that we understand vision. We know, amen, what Israel ought to do like the sons of Issachar. You see, these are the three components that defines the sons of Issachar. All right, there is wisdom in the house, there is understanding in the house, and there is knowledge in the house. But let me not paraphrase it, let me finish reading it. It said, By wisdom, so wisdom is a tool. By wisdom, amen. By wisdom, a house or a nation is what built. And this is the reason why we need apostolic men and women in our day. Because whenever we talk about building, we're speaking to a particular spirit, the apostolic. The Bible says the apostolic are wise master builder. They are the chief architect. They are the chief architect. They are the chief designer. We want to redesign. We want to rebuild. We want to construct heaven's intention. We need what is called apostolic spirits. My wisdom, my house is built. The wise king, the focus of the South African church needs to change, all right, to a building, amen, yes, wise king. We need to, amen, yes, come into a dimension where the influence, the outflow, amen, of our message, of our sermon, amen, of what defines us as a community. If you not, if you notice what I've been saying, I'm relating, all right, the influence, the position of the church, amen, to one that has been, you know, strategically positioned to rebuild a nation. That is scripture. That is scripture. By wisdom a house is built and by understanding the same house is what established and by knowledge, by knowledge, knowledge will speak to institutions, knowledge will speak to the academic, you know, departments, to, you know, our schooling, by knowledge, hallelujah, knowledge, awareness, insight, by knowledge, the rooms of the house are filled with what? With every precious and beautiful treasure. My word. My word. What a scripture. What a scripture. But like I will always say, if we know this without understanding how to go about amen, the utilization, then it's just an idealistic message. You know, anybody can claim as oh, by wisdom, we can quote the scripture. But this scripture is, amen, is, is calling us, amen, you know, to operate in a particular format. This scripture, amen, is a call to action. And this call to action will require, amen, that we come into certain understanding. 
What is that understanding? Let's go to the next scripture that I want to quickly highlight. Isaiah 55. All right, verse, verse 8. And I'll tell you the reason why I'm bringing this scripture. You know, we have not really touched on the key point, all right, that we were looking into this morning. And this is very strategic because the Lord drew my attention this afternoon to, to this scripture that, all right, you want to deal with, amen, the prince of the air. You want to deal with principality. You want to deal with powers. You want to deal with wicked spirit in high places. You want to deal with, amen, how to pull down stronghold. You need to be kitted. You need to be built up. You need to have, amen, the template. You need to have a sense of of understanding of what makes for effective spirituality hallelujah and that's what i'm looking at now okay that's what i'm looking at now isaiah 55 verse 8 says my thoughts are not your thoughts i'll tell you why i'm why, why i'm drawing the scripture why i'm pulling the scripture why i'm emphasizing the scripture my thoughts are not your thoughts Neither are your ways, my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are, you know, are higher than your ways and my thought than your thought. So we see two things here, you understand? God is saying, I need to separate something. All right, there is a way, there's a method, there's a methodology, there's a belief system, there is a paradigm to which, all right, Israel, you want to do your own thing. Okay, when you talk about building, when you talk about construction, when you talk about transformation, when you talk about whatever you want to talk about, you've got a template of thinking. But your template of thinking, your mindset is not aligning with my own. What is my point? What are you saying, Isaiah? I, I understand that we want to build, we want to see a nation rise up, we want to see, you know, a nation develop, but there is a way we need to go about it, and it has to be through the ways of God. Why am I saying it has to be through the ways of God? Because there is a way, all right, that cement right onto a man that looks okay. There is a pattern right now as we're talking about the nation of South Africa and all of that, there is a system that has been set in place. There's a political system that's been set in place. And that is the human concept. You know, democracy is the human idea. And of course, you know, that's the, that's the closest, you understand, all right, to the right ways. But democracy is human ideology, is human belief system. But that doesn't make it, you know, completely wrong, all right? But we're saying that even in that con concept of, you know, contestation and democracy in choosing leaders, it's far from, you understand, the ways of God, from the concept, from the, you know, intentions, from, you know, the, the strategy. As long as we live in this world, we will need to participate, you understand, in this template of choosing leadership, which is called democracy. But the church, all right, that is not of this world. Though you are in this world, the scripture says, but you are not of this world, okay? Therefore, the principles, the math, the method, the idea, idea to which the church operates should not be limited, all right, to the idea, to the ideals, to the, to the value system of the world. Because the Bible said we are not of this world, all right? Yes, we understand that we have to act, we have to behave because we live in a real world, you understand? But we have to also understand that in a higher position as the ecclesia, remember the term ecclesia is the, is the, is the, is the concept of those called out. But we are not just called out, <laughs> you understand? We are also called us to become influencers, to become, if you will, you know, uh, in fact, the word itself, Ecclesia, means, all right, legislators. We're, we're called out to become men and women who can, amen, speak into, all right, a situation, who can prefer solution, who can give answer, who can give direction, you understand? What comes to mind is, you know, in the palace of Pharaoh, in the palace of Pharaoh, Moses was saying, let my people go. Go go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh said, who is that God? Moses said, well, I'll prove that God to you. He brought out his rod, which is a type, amen, of his authority, of his, of his, you know, legitimate calling and power and representation. You understand? As God's ambassador, because Moses was sent, amen, to Egypt as God's ambassador. You understand? So Moses, you know, cast his rod down. Of course, that's what God told him. He said, cast your rod down. He casted his authority down. That authority, that rod became what? A serpent. You know, Pharaoh looked at him and said, Okay, mm. 
Is this all your God can do? Ah, your God is good, is powerful, but is this all your God can do? This is Egypt. We also do things like this. So he called his magicians. He called his men. He called his leaders. He called his senators. He called his representative. Whatever you call them. He called them. All right. These were people who have interfaced with all kinds of powers. Who I mean, these are human beings, but all right, they live in the they live in the realm of the spirit. Humans who behave like principality. They came with their rod. They also cast their rod down, and voila, the rods also turn to serpent. We're talking about contesting for the soul of a nation. We're talking about amen, engaging. Hallelujah. Yes. Issues that will speak to the deliverance and to the healing, to the restoration of a people. Remember, all of this were done on behalf of people. The, here's the people out there. They are being, you know, uh, led into all kinds of things. They are under bondage. But here's Moses, amen, representing them. Moses in, is in the palace, all right, representing them. All of the things that is going on is because of the deliverance of the people and that's the kind of a church we need we need a Moses kind of a church in this end time remember the first time Moses showed up he showed up based on his own ability based on his own wisdom based on his own you know a, a strength you understand he saw an Egyptian you know a, 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 a fighting an Israeli and and what did he do he defended the Israeli the Egyptian died and 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 he thought well his people would have supported him as a well yeah yeah no they said, who made your God over us? Who sent you to do that? He ran away. Because he thought he was ready. He was not ready. But by, by, by the time he came back, he was ready. Because God had approved him. You see, the first time Moses stepped into that concept, all right, it, it was, the Bible said, and it came to his mind. It was something he did based on his own passion. How many of us run all kinds of things based on our passion, based on our zeal, based on our ability, not by might, not by power. Moses knew that God has called him, that God had, you know, graced him, that God, amen, wants him to be, you understand, a leader. But he jumped the gun. So by this time around that he came back, he was ready because God sent him. And when God sent us, he empowers us. And this is the battle we saw in the, in the palace of Pharaoh. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the ways of God, amen, in dislodging, in bringing out the people, hallelujah, in bringing reform, in bringing transformation. It has to be in accordance to the ways of God, to the method of God, to the desires of God, to the design of God, to the timing of God. God is looking for a new set of leaders as the world, all right, yes, is you know uh, uh, laying all kinds of foundations down in relating to what to do about amen yes the destiny of a nation god also has his own plan god has his own blueprint god has his own desire god has his own methodology or you understand and if we are truly amen part of the body of christ the church of the lord representing amen god's prophetic intention within our nation and society we need to align with the methodology of god that's the first thing i want to do you know i want to establish because that is what is going to give us the authority to to be able to deal with certain forces that politicians cannot deal with that money bags will not be able to deal with. That no matter how influential they are, you know, I mean, you must give it to certain people. They try their best. But nothing is happening. Why? Because what they are dealing with is beyond just you know, circumstance, you know, human ability. Like, like we shared this morning, I'm still going to touch on, you know, the power of influence. All right, how you know how environment shape people's belief and thinking. Or you understand how the enemy, all right, hides behind circumstance to define certain character behavior. You understand, and people are trying to bring a change. Where no, 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 it's not going to happen. You've got to, you've got to connect, amen, to a higher reality of authority, amen, that gives you, yes, the leeway, that gives you the capacity, that gives you the voice to bring a change. 
you shall decree a thing and it shall be established that is not gonna happen because you've you know you've got some nice idea no this thing is not gonna you, you can't build a nation by you know a, a nice ideas you can't build a nation by just you know nice innovations no you have to understand that to first to build a na nation you have to dislodge hallelujah certain powers positions of influence authority that have been well positioned hallelujah in the heavenly places like I said this morning you understand I, I said this morning I said every nation has got a well positioned prince over 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 their realms every nation has got a man a power you understand in fact let's let's leave it at the word prince an authority you understand because it is that authority that prince all right that that speaks to that influences all right that releases if you will capacity grace resource amen to principalities power rulers of darkness spiritual wickedness in high places to carry out their mission you see principalities rulers of darkness and all of that they 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 they, they do the bidding of the prince of the air So the first thing we want to do, excuse me, the first thing we want to do is to understand that we have to shift into what is called the thought of God. We have to shift into the realm of God's thought. We have to shift into the realm of God's ways. I'm speaking to the methodology, amen, of the kingdom. We have to shift into, hallelujah, yes, the concept of the ways of God. We have to shift into this realm because if we don't shift into this realm, all right, we will be toiling and we are not going to see a change. Peter said we have toiled all night. You understand? But we have cut nothing. But we did everything that is in the book. We apply all the principle of leadership. <laughs> We read all the manifesto. We, we followed everything. Why are we not seeing change? Because what you're dealing with, all right, is beyond just human ingenuity. You've got to understand, amen, that when you mention a nation, you also need to understand that there are powerful satanic demonic forces, amen, that are in charge. The earlier we wake up to this reality, the easier for us. The quicker we are able to change our wine skin. My thoughts are not your are not your thoughts. Your thought defines your perspective and of course your action and your reaction. The kinds of thought we have, either amen, as a leader, understand, as an influencer, as a father, as a mother. As a president of a nation, as a governor, you understand? As a chief justice, whatever defines our thoughts, whatever defines our way, whatever defines our own methodology, you understand? Yes, is what defines how we are going to act out. It's amazing that they said that South Africa is one of the best constitution in the world. And you wonder how such a constitution that is supposed to be one of the best in the world is not translating to transforming the lives of the, of the ordinary people. I mean, that should baffle anyone. Because these things that we're talking about, it's not just about putting nice things down on paper. That's good for, you know, people who are, who are spiritually blind, who do not really understand, amen, what it takes to shift, to change a nation. If we are going to shift, if we're going to shift the narrative of a nation, if we're going to impact a nation, we have to take the battle to where, hallelujah, yes, the war is being fought. And we know that war is being fought, amen, in the heavenly realm. We have to take it to the heavenly realm. We have to take it, amen, yes, into the spirit world. Yes, it's from that place that we can begin to enforce certain, all right, changes. We have to move, amen, from a dimension of a Jesse who 
presented, amen, his children, but left one behind. I spoke a bit about that. The Bible says that when, you know, uh, Jesus, the father of David, presented all his sons. In fact, when, amen, the, 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 you know, the first uh, son, Eliab, was, you know, brought in. The Bible says that when Samuel saw him, he says, surely this is the anointed of the Lord. God said, Samuel, for how long you've been on that training? I've been training you and you still make this blunder. No, it's not the one. What am I saying? God has a mind. It has, God has an intelligent mind. God has a divine purpose. He has a divine plan. Amen. In regarding to the development, the advancement, the movement of, amen, his counsel within the nation. And it is left for you and I to agree with that. But we cannot agree with that if we are spiritually blind and dull. If we are looking at things based on how, amen, is being presented in the human realm realm we have to lift our eyes onto the hill where our help comes from going back to some of the key points that we need to make that I need to make because I, I, I need to I, I need to emphasize on this point again this morning we spoke about, you understand, the, the influence of environment, the influence of the environment, all right, in relating to how society behave, think, and reason, and live their life. And we have said this morning that that, that idea, concept of environment is not just one that well, it's just, it's just there. No, no. It was orchestrated, all right, by powerful satanic, you know, a, a spirit. Now, let me go back to some of the things that I said this morning. I'm not sure if I'll be able. Okay, I think I've got one here, all right. This is, this is something that we said this morning. And I, I'm going to quickly connect it to another point, And uh, we'll see how we then begin to end, you know, this evening. All right. I, I, I said it's been long proven, all right, scientifically, that environment, all right, affect human development. Not my word, environment. What do we mean when we say environment? Environment, all right, is is almost like the, the, the mood that defines how we behave, how we think, how we reason. You understand? Our preferences. Yes, every society has got an environment, all right, that defines them, that, 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 that defines their culture. When you say culture, you talk about an environment, and we live within an environment, but environment is not just something that, okay, is man-made. That's the point that I want to make, that I've made this morning, and I also want to re-emphasize that, all right? We say scientifically, it's been proven that environment, somehow, even in the world of science, people can just understand how environment can have such an impact on people that when you bring i mean it's amazing that you know these days you watch certain you know uh, uh, uh you know um what do you call it now certain clips on 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 on, on facebook and i'm seeing some you know uh africans particularly from you know where i come from who are married to white people today in fact i was watching you know uh, one one clip of an indian woman you know who got married to a, a nigeria a yoruba man and uh, it's amazing and it's so funny you understand and you know this woman is trying to this indian woman trying to speak yoruba <laughs> You understand? And uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny. But the one that really got me was she was learning to eat pounded yam, you know, with egusi soup. And uh, you, you could see the way, all right, she, she, she took, she cut the pounded yam. I said, no, this woman has been assimilated. She's been taught. You understand? And, and, and you could see that she loved what, you know, you know, she's eating. Even though, of course, it, it, it's just an entertainment. But you could see that this is somebody that comes from a different world entirely she's from india there's another woman okay uh, uh, i don't know i think she's i'm not sure if she's from scotland or from somewhere she got married to this Igbo guy from also from nigeria they've got kids and you could see you know how the environment how the Igbo. i mean this white woman she can speak Igbo fluently i'm like god almighty yes 
That is the power of environment. When, 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 when you stay in an environment, all right, for a long period of time, you know, it is natural that you begin, you, you begin to act like, all right, yes, you know, the people within that region, you begin to behave like them, talk like them, you, you love what they do, you eat, I mean, you see, you see a, a white woman speaking Igbo, you ask yourself, how in the world did this happen? Yes, that's the power, you understand, of uh, the influence, the influence, when a child, like I said this morning, a, a child that was born into this world, God commissioned give that child you understand a seed to become powerful to become a leader to become somebody all right that will influence and change society and that child somehow I understand was born and was taken out of an environment that can build that can shape what God has placed in in, in, in him or her all right and was placed in the wrong in, environment if not because the hand of the Lord is upon that child, that seed will die. That purpose, amen, will be destroyed. Because the environment has a way, amen, of reaching deep into your very core nature, amen, and alter it. Environment is very powerful. Because environment by nature, amen, is domineering. It influences you. It controls you. And this morning, I was able to argue that, okay, uh, this thing that influences people, that make people behave, act in a particular way, you know, make them behave, you know, it's not just something or right, that is, is done, you know, naturally. There are influence that influences environment. And it's from that point, all right, that we talked about the concept of principality. We talked about the prince of the air. Maybe I should go back to my note again because I really want to really drill this down so that I can then move into, all right, the next thing. And why am I looking at this? Because if you really want to bring a change to a society, all right, you've got to know how to engage, amen. Yes, the core beliefs, which of course is sourced by, amen, the domineering influence that is defined as the environment. You've got to know how to change... If you want to change people, you've got to, first of all, engage the environment, amen, that has influenced or that is influencing them. People are the reflection of the environment that dominates them. Environment is what builds strong goals in our life. So we said it's been long proven that scientifically that environment affects human behavioral development and of course productivity. Why is it that companies will spend a lot of money, they invest a lot, a lot, amen, in the environment because they want, amen, productivity and they understand that productivity, amen, you understand, is a direct influence of the comfort of the, of the environment, of the kinds, you see, Every, in fact, today, most companies, all right, are creating, a, 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 you know, are, are pressing to create, you understand, a workable environment, an environment that is viable, an environment that will ease the stress of the people so that the people can be what, more productive. If the environment that you live, you live in, all right, or, you know, is, is harsh, is difficult, amen, is aggressive, amen, is, 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 is domineering, you understand, you, you won't be able to, you know, give your best. And of course, we understand that what impacts the life of the children of Israel in, in Egypt, amen, was the environment. Yes. And that environment, we saw how that environment, amen, played, amen, even when they've been br brought out of, you know, slavery. They've been free, but the environment, amen, it, 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 did, did not leave them because the environment had built, amen, a template, a, a, an idea of thinking within their minds. We're talking about a nation here. So if leadership is not speaking to this point, to this concept that we're talking about you're going to have very you know a, a low sense of 
you know, transformation. Let, let me finish. We said, you know, okay, in fact, let me leave this point. I think I've made enough point on that, uh, uh, um, you know, concept. And then I went for that. I said, all right, I can see that there's a connection with this two point, this two uh, uh, statement. I says, what science may not be aware of or maybe are, are seeking to deny is the, is the fact that societal environments, all right, societal you know, uh, uh, environment are powerfully shaped, all right, by who or what that's the point that i really want to make by you know so, you know societal environment are powerfully shaped by who or what the bible define as the prince of the power of the air the prince of the power of the air are not just positioned in the realm of the spirits you understand just because they want to be you know they, that's that's their home no no they are positioned there strategically you understand to influence what is beneath them all right. So I said, society, the societal environment, are powerfully shaped by what or who the Bible defines as the prince of the power of the air. And then I went further. I said, this satanic entity, of course, that is known as amen, the prince of the air. And I explained that word this morning that the prince of the air basically means the chief ruler, the one who has authority over. The one, all right, who is the governor? The one, all right, who's, who, who gives, amen, yes, you know, leadership on how things, all right, must, must be done. So this prince, you understand, has been positioned as a powerful influencer. All right? So this is the same, you know, uh, uh, you know, entity I'm referring to as a satanic entity. This satanic entity or this prince is set over a nation. All right, and his purpose as is to has been ordained. You understand to be a watcher. Princes are watchers, just as we have a man watchmen in the realm of the spirit there are also watchmen all right yes in the 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 territory in the past of darkness position over over nation over society so this prince is also a watcher is is a ruler it controls it governs amen over nation through now listen to this this is where it gets interesting through several highly organized iraq system of satanic you know a uh, uh, government over a nation people think you know the the kingdom of darkness is disorganized that is what the enemy wants you know people to believe and many have believed it <laughs> the kingdom of darkness is one of the most organized you understand system and it needs to be organized in order to effectively carry out amen, his mission and his mandate on the or their mandate. And this is why the scripture takes time, all right, to define, to identify them. You understand? And we've spoken about that, all right. Maybe I should quickly, while I'm on this, maybe I should quickly uh, 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 define them. Let's quickly define them. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 and 13 says, For we for our struggle or wrestle or wrestling or battle, amen, or warfare is not against flesh and blood. It's not your brother. It's not that next person, all right? It's not the people throwing, you know, you know, cheer, you know, cheers to, you know, uh, you know, to themselves in the parliament. That that's not that that's not the enemy. You understand? Know, yes, you know, emotion can be very high when there is all kinds of argument and all of that. But that is not really the enemy. You know, the EFF is not your enemy. The P is not your enemy. You know, even the ANC is not the enemy. You understand? They, you know, whoever, you know, the DA is not the enemy. They can be manifesting certain characters character certain behavior that is unbecoming but they are not the enemy the real enemy is the one that we do not see and this is where we need a church that is awakened that is you know that is active that all right their eyes of understanding has been opened to see this 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 spirit now while i'm on this okay let me finish this thought all right we said for our uh, 
our struggle, our battle, our contestation. I love that word, contestation, because that's the word we use in politics, contestation. Our contestation, our warfare, our battle is not against flesh and blood. It meaning it's not human, but it's against the rulers. Can you see? When they say rulers, they put a comma there. So there is an entity called rulers. These rulers are still under the prince. Because in, 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 in the book of Daniel, we saw how this prince, amen, over Persia, all right, hindered, amen, an angel that was sent to bring, amen, the answer to Daniel's prayer. That, 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 that tells you that this is not something you just, you know, rababa over. You sha sha sha. You like, you come on, devil will bind you. Ah, 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 ah. These are powerful Iraqi spirit. For you to deal with them, you must have, amen, a clear, amen, authority. You must have, in fact, remember that when, you know, when, when, when there was a contestation, a battle, you understand, over the body of Moses after Moses died. One of the prince of the air wanted to stop, amen. Yes, uh, uh, the, you know the, the, the body of Moses, but from from being from being taken. The scripture said, "All right, the Lord rebuke him." That not even amen. The angel will go and begin to open his mouth, you know, and begin. No, he had to. He had to invoke the name of the Lord. And that comes with some level of understanding. And this is where we're talking about a mature church. If we're dealing with issues of, you know, nation building, government, we're dealing with societal reform and transformation. We're not dealing with our little happy clappy, you know, uh, uh, church-like, you know, belief system. No, we're dealing with a highly intelligent governmental authority and influence. We're talking about men and women who have a standing, all right, who have a man, a knowledge. In fact, who have been invited to sit at the court of God so that when they're dealing with the spirit, they're not dealing with them, amen, through just, you know, some uh, ritualistic, you know, zeal. They're dealing with, with those spirit because they understand the legislative authority. Remember, that's what the Bible says in the book of, you know, Sam, that we may execute the judgment that is written. You have to understand the legislative arm, amen, of the kingdom for you to be able to address these powers and spirit amen position over nations so the scripture says we wrestle not against how we wrestle is not please take your mind away from wrestling match <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes you know most of us creates images in our mind we wrestle now so what <laughs> this wrestling amen is a wrestle that has to do with spiritual intelligence you know like lawyers have you seen when a lawyer amen in a courtroom is arguing yes is you know positioning you know his arguments that's what we're talking about you have to know, amen, yes, your position. You have to know the laws of the law. You have to live a life that is in alignment with the will of God. All right? Let me not go too far, but I, I think you, you, you already get the concept of what we are describing here. Our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, comma, against authorities, comma, against the powers of darkness, comma, against, amen, spiritual forces. Of evil in the heavenly realm. Those are the Iraqi spirit that we're dealing with when it comes to nation. Listen, these entities, all right, are not dealing with your little, you know, uh, you know, you know, those little things we, you know, we deal with. No, 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 no. These are powerful governmental administrative spirits to do the bidding of amen, Satan 
over regions, over nations, over realms. So for you to deal with them, you also need to, amen, have a knowledge and insight. You have to, amen, become a bona fide instrument of God's apostolic, amen, vessels and instruments in the earth. This Bible says this cannot go except by prayer and fasting. That does not mean that, okay, we're just going to fasting and we're going to prayer and we're dealing with them. No, prayer and fasting is what then gives you a leeway into the spirit where they're able to give you the kinds of authority, amen, that when you speak, these powers, amen, they respond to you, they listen to you. Because if it is prayer and fasting, I tell you, I come from a country where people people can fast three hundred, you know, three hundred days in a in a you know in a year. You hear people say we're going forty days, we're going 100, 180 days. A church will go hundred and eighty days fasting. I'm like, wow. But when you look, after the fasting, you would have thought that they would have changed the nation. They still brought forth wind. So, <laughs> let, let's remove our mind from religious you know, activity and service, lest we think that we are dealing with many of the things we call intercession and prayer. I'm telling you, they are the expression of a powerful religious spirit that are actually influenced and controlled by this prince. Are you getting are you getting it? And it's for that reason the scripture says the only way we will be able to deal with all right this concept according to you know uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 it, it, it says all right when our obedience is complete have you read that before when your obedience is complete there are certain dimension of authority and power will not be able to exert amen in shifting things in changing narrative in the in the human realm except our obedience is first complete then we have the power to bind and to lose. Can you see how powerful obedience is? And that's why I said this, was it this morning and yesterday, that why the Lord said, if my people who are called by my name will first humble themselves. Can you see that humility comes before even prayer? You would have thought prayer should come first. No, 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 no. Humility comes first before prayer. The posture of our heart, amen, the condition of our life. And the reason for humility is because humility is the opposite of what is, amen, on ground. You know, what the enemy needs to rule society, to control people, is the spirit of pride. And this morning, you need to listen to today's morning uh, message. I spoke, you know, uh, 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 extensively about, you know, the spirit of pride. And I, I we spoke about the various kinds of pride that can influence or control society. To humble yourself is one of the most powerful instruments God has given to us. Humility allows God, amen, to step into our situation. Pride always invites Satan and his cohorts. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that you may ex be exalted in due time. It says, therefore, verse you know, 13 of that scripture, it says, therefore, put on the whole armor of God. What is the armor of God? The armor of God is a manifestation of humility. It's a manifestation of submission. Put on the whole armor of God. He says, so that when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground. And after you have done all to stand, stand. Let me quickly read the scripture that I want to, you know, uh, uh, read in the morning, but I couldn't. In 2 Kings, now we're entering the heart of the message now. In 2 Kings, Verse 1 to 4 in 2 Kings 15. In the, in, the, in the 27th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Azariah, son of Amaziah, king of Judah, began to reign. Verse 2. 
he, he was 16 years old. Not that he was 16 years old when he, when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem for you know, uh, 52 years. His mother's name was Jecoleah. You know, she was from Jerusalem, verse 3. Look at what the Bible says in verse 3. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He did, amen, what was right, amen. Zechariah, the son of Amaziah, did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. I mean, that is excellent. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. But look at verse 4. The high place, the high places, the high places, however, were not removed. The people, all right, continue to offer sacrifice and burnt incense there. However, though this man, this king, did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, however, the high places was not removed. Why did the scripture will have to include that there? Because, you understand, the high place is the stronghold, amen, where principalities and power have their foothold in terms of regulating and controlling, yes, the behavioral, you know, a, a lifestyle and belief system of the people. The enemy does not mind us, amen. Do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. As long as we don't touch, you understand? Yes. His position of influence in society. As long as we don't, amen, deal with, yes, what the Bible referred to as the high places. The high places where the people go, you understand, and offer sacrifice, yes, to Tammuz. Is the high place they go? Yes, to burn incense. Is the high place they go to offer sacrifice to all kinds of God? So listen to this. They don't mind you worship God, do the things of God, as long as you don't disturb them. You don't disturb their agenda. With all the good description. This king, hallelujah, was known for. The Bible says, the high place, or the high places, however, was not removed. So they expected him to remove the high places. Ladies and gentlemen, can I quickly say this to you? Government cannot remove the high places. That is an assignment, amen, for a ch for the church who understand their position as the as kings because only kings are given the legitimate power all right to remove high places and who are these kings this king is symbolic amen of a powerful governmental apostolic church that's why the Bible says we are kings, amen, and priests in there. Why do you think, amen, we are identified as kings? What, what position, what, what nation are we governing? No, we are governing the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Not this nonsense thing people are doing in America. They say we are kings and then they go get themselves some nice golden chair. As we used to see that crazy, one of the crazy men of God back in the day. He's got himself a golden chair, golden ring, everything is golden. He's a king and a priest in the earth. No, you were deceived by the devil. Our kingship is a condition and position of spiritual authority. And to function in that position of authority, as a king, you need humility. Is that same spirit we have seen in Africa today? People will tell, oh no, we are kings. We have authority and we have power. And so, you know, based on what you know the scriptures say, they go get themselves, you know, you know, mansions, <laughs> big cars, you know, all kinds, everything is is mega mega, big, 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 because we are kings. <laughs> That's not what the scripture means. A king that cannot remove the high place is a king that has compromised. 
and in fact that has lost its legitimacy because the purpose of the kingship the purpose of kingship all right all right is to make sure that the heart of the people amen is turned back to the lord is to make sure that the people serve god is to see amen that the life of the people yes is in alignment with the will of god but beyond that to see that amen the nation prosper not via the bull not via the worship of ba not via the sacrifice amen to ba but by acknowledging god and that leads me to the next you know a scripture that i really want to draw your attention to and you will find that in judges chapter Chapter six. You know this like I, I, I know it if you're a Bible student. All right. Here is God who wants to change and transform, hallelujah, the nation. A nation that have been under the bondage and influence, in fact, has been under hiding from the Midianites. That people will have to sneak out in the night to go look for food. Because the Midianite, all right, has, has destroyed, taken over, you understand, at the nation. The economy of a nation was under the control. Whenever the children of Israel, you know, plant and try to advance and do something, the Midianite come and, 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 and take all of that. And the reason for that is because the people of God, amen, had turned their heart to what? To idol, to idol worship. So that was, you understand, a punishment to them. But I'm saying that sometimes the reflection of the economy of a nation could be a manifestation of punishment. If you're not living in accordance to righteousness and you think you can prosper as a nation, no, you've got something else coming for you. Righteousness exalts a nation. That includes, amen, every aspect of development. Exaltation, amen, means advancement, means productivity, means increase. But that comes because our heart is right with God. Let's not make the mistake to think that, amen, we can do our own thing. We can run our own life the way we want to run it and still we're going to prosper. No, the Bible said in one hour, everything that Babylon represents, all the wealth, all the riches of Babylon in one hour was burnt away. Hallelujah. All the ship, amen, sank in the ocean. Let's not make the mistake that God is not in the business of judging us in the 21st century. Even as a nation, we we have to turn back to God. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. I said I was going to lead you to uh, Judges chapter 6. The scripture said in Judges chapter 6 after, you know, the angel of the Lord I said to Gideon, well, Gideon, you can bring a change. You can bring a reform. You can bring deliverance to the people, to the land. Gideon said, me, no, not me. I'm the least in my father's house. <laughs> Nobody has ever done such a thing. I'm weak. I'm tired. I'm, I'm afraid. They say, no, you're a mighty man of valor. They called out, amen, his destiny. But something interesting here is after, amen, Gideon had been accepted and God was going to use Gideon to do this mighty thing. God said, there's one thing I need you to do, Gideon. You need to go to your father's house and pull down the high place. The altar that your father has built, all right, to bow. The, the, the pole, the, the Ashtoreth pole in your father's house. I need you to go pull it down. What's the word for South Africa? If we want to see development, transformation, godliness, advancement, you understand? It is our responsibility first as a church, amen, to begin to pull down, yes, the high places, to pull down the false altars, to bring down the stronghold, you know, and that is the only way we'll be able to dislodge. Because you see, like I said, the prince of the air, all right, that's been positioned over this, over the land, over the nation, all right, is directly connected, linked, amen, to these altars. 
If you want to dislodge the influence and the position, amen, of the prince of the air over a society, over a, over a nation, over a, you know, a family, maybe, you need to locate the altar, you understand, that is feeding that, that prince, all right, that is doing the bidding of that prince. And this is what the Lord, you know, is, is, is saying to Gideon, Gideon, before you go into war, before you go and fight the Midianites, you have to understand that what is empowering the Midianites, all right, is the prince of the air. You understand? And this prince of the air is is being worshipped, is being you know influenced through the altars of Baal that are positioned, that are built, all right, in the land. Your father has got one. <laughs> you understand? If you want me to back you, if you want me to use you, if you want to carry out the kind of things I want you to do, all right, you need, and that takes a lot of courage, a lot of boldness, a lot of preparation. You understand? Yes, to do that, God said to Gideon, you will read that in, Je in Judge, Judges chapter 6. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just trying to find the particular spot Okay, let's look at it from verse uh, 23. And the Lord said to him, Peace, do not be afraid. You are, going, you are not going to die. Of course, when he saw the Lord, he's like, I'm going to die. No, you're not going to die. Verse 24 says, So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is peace. All right? Till this day, it stands in, the, in offer of the uh, Abyssalites. Then, of, of course, in verse uh, 25, I'm just trying to make it a bit bolder. In verse 25, uh, the Bible said, that same night, the Lord said to Gideon, take the second bull, uh, all right, from your father's heads, not the word bull. In fact, that's what struck me. It said, take the bull. Have you noticed that when you talk, when you are describing the economy of a nation, what do they use? All right, a bull. A bull is symbolic, all right, of you know a nation's economy. When you go to you know your JSC, you know your you know your stock exchange building, most of the countries, most of the nation's stock exchange building, what you see, amen, in front there is a bull. Why do you have you ever asked yourself why a bull? Because amen, yes, you know, the spirit that speaks into economic growth and fertility is the spirit, you understand, of Baal, and Baal is symbolic of bull. Hey, it's simple to know. Take the second bull. From your father's heads. The Bible says, the one that is seven years old, listen to this, tear, tear down your father's altar. Tear down your father's altar to bow. You know what that is? That is a judgment to the economy. What was, amen, the Midianite attacking? The economy, you understand, of the nation. The, the, you know, the, 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 the crops of the nation, you understand? That was what the Midianite were attacking. There was famine in the land, not because the people were not, you know, planting, they were not, you know, working, but because there was a spirit of the, the Midianite spirit goes for the economy of the, of the land, you know, sets the people in fear. And it's amazing that what God is asking a Megiddon to do was to go attack the spirit, you understand, that was actually, you know, terrorizing the economy of the land. And that spirit is the spirit of the bull, which of course is connected to, you know, to Baal. Baal is known as the god of fertility, productivity. So if we are going to rise up and be able to function effectively, effectively, we have to have the right mental, spiritual strategy. We have to know what to, what, what we are dealing with. It cannot just be hit and wrong. We cannot be confused about this thing. We have to be very strategic. We have to know what God, amen, wants us to deal with and how he wants us, amen. Because remember, the enemy we're dealing with are very strategic. The enemy we're dealing with are very 
you know, position in terms of, you know, hierarchical authority. Let's, let's continue. It said, go to your father's house, tear down or at the altar of Baal and cut down, amen, the Asherah pole beside it. Then build a proper, look at this. He said, then build a proper, amen, a proper altar. Then build, then build, you understand, a proper altar. Thank you, Father. It says, then build a proper altar. So, of course, Gideon did what, you know, the Lord asked him to do. And by the next day, you know, there was all kinds of commotion. Who pulled down the altar of Baal? They finally discovered it was Gideon. And they wanted to, you know, kill him. And he said, it's not going to happen. The father says it's not going to happen. So basically, the, you know, it's like, it's like after the, the altar has been destroyed, it's like the eyes of the, of the father got open. Rather than him getting angry with his son, remember Gideon was already afraid, but rather than the father getting angry with him and say, Gideon, what have you done? <laughs> the man was the one defending Gideon. And of course, that it was from that point that God, amen, used Gideon to raise an army. We want to raise an army for God. We want to become an effective nation. We want to become an effective, productive society. Amen. We want to become, you know, a people who understand the heart of God, the mind of God as the body of Christ. And, and of course, remember the church represent. The church ought to be representing the nation. We ought to be standing to defend. Jesus said the people are scattered. They are like sheep without, amen, a shepherd. The church, amen, responsibility is to gather, is to bring the people together. Forget that they are saved or they are not saved. When you begin to do the right thing, just like Amen, uh, what you know Elijah did, Amen, on Mount Carmel. Remember, before they climbed the mountain, Elijah gathered the people. He said, "Choose today. On which side are you?" Everybody is looking. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna choose. Because they are not sure if God was going to turn up. They are not sure. You understand? These are people who have been living in fear. They have been under the tyrannical ruler of Jezebel. So when Elijah said, who is on the life side? They were like, I, I don't know. They took their face away. But guess what? When Elijah climbed the mountain. When Elijah repaired the altar. The altar that had been destroyed, amen, yes, by Jezebel, by erecting our own altar, all right, to worship Baal, because Jezebel was a worshiper of Baal. When Elijah repaired it, followed the instructions of the Spirit, amen, used the, you know, the, 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 the 12 stones, amen, you know, to rebuild the altar of God, what happened? God's fire came down, consumed the sacrifice. You understand? And when they saw, you know, what had happened, God moved based on, you know, the obedience of Elijah. It was the same people who refused to listen, who refused to respond to the call of Elijah. The Bible said the same people were the one, amen, who, who grabbed hold of the false prophets, amen, of Baal, who grabbed hold, amen, of, you know, uh, the 800 prophets, you understand, under Jezebel, who went to slaughter them. The same people who were afraid. Oh, God help me. Don't think that the people don't know what to do. They just need, amen, the right kind of leadership. They just need a church, amen, that is bold, that have a sense, amen, of governmental authority. They just need a church that can stand, amen, like, amen, yes, the, the Elijah's company. They just need a church, you understand, that can stand like the Gideon company. Because, amen, when Gideon saw what God can do, he was bold enough, hallelujah. And he went blowing the shofar, hallelujah. 30,000, 32,000 people decide they were going to, amen, defend their country. They were going to stand against, amen, the Midianites. <laughs> and God said, Gideon, there are still too many. How many of you are afraid? I mean, people will say, we want to join, we want to... How many of you are afraid? If you're afraid, go back home. We saw people went back home. God said, there are still too many. Let me test them for you. Bring them to the waters. Out of 32,000, only 300 remained. 
qualify to bring a reform, to bring a change, to bring transformation, to bring deliverance, hallelujah, to the land. What is God saying to us? God does not need a multitude to save a nation. Are you getting what I'm saying? God only needs people with the right heart. God doesn't save by multitude. God has his strategy. And the strategies of God always work with people who have a contrite heart, who have the right heart. When you go into the things of God for selfish reason, no matter how nice and wonderful, amen, it may be looking on the outside, you will lack the power to effect change. That's why he's saying to us, we have to change the modus operandi. We have to change the concept, amen, of how, amen, we engage when it comes to nationhood, when it comes to transformation. Thank God for inter intellectual, you know, knowledge. Thank God for technocrats. Thank God for wisdom. Thank God for understanding. Hey, but what we're dealing with, you understand, you know, has to, has to do with men and women who have power who have understanding who have a place in the realm of the spirit people whom god amen can speak to where people that god can call samuel samuel and samuel can rise up and say god do you call me we need men like david who have a sense of understanding you see like i told you god is a strategy if God wants to bring change and reform to a society, he has his own principle. He has his own concept. He said to, you know, uh, uh, to, to, to David, he says, take the cheese and the bread to your brother at the war front. Only for, for him to get to the war front, everybody's, you know, we're in hiding, including the king. We're in hiding. What's going on here? Why is everybody hiding? I thought you guys are supposed to be warring here. I thought you guys are supposed to be advancing. Are we not Israel? Are we not the army of God? What's going on here? No, they're afraid. When they saw the giant, when they saw, you know, Goliath, if including the king. But David had a different spirit. Like the scripture said about, you know, Caleb and Joshua. They, 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 they had a different spirit. They had a different spirit. What did they do? They went into high, you know, they, they, they charged against, you know, the problem. David said, what is going to happen to the person who removed this disgrace from the land? They said, well, the king said he's going to, he's going to give, you know, his daughter to that person. David says, small thing. Take me to the king. <laughs> his elder brother said, what are you doing here? What was, what's wrong with you? This is a battle for mature people. Mature people in hiding. The king said, okay, you want to fight? All right. I won't stop. I won't stop you. At least let me give you, let me give you my armory. Let me give you my clothing. Let me give you, all right, what protects me. Let me give you the muti. <laughs> let me give you the charm. Let me, if you, if you believe in your charm, why didn't you use your own charm to go fight? If you believe that you've got the right armory, all right, yes, you've got the right gear. Why didn't you go face Goliath? They've exhausted every knowledge, every wisdom. Nothing is happening. But here's a guy who can hear God. Oh, God, help me. Oh, Jesus. He's, he's young. Hallelujah. Yes. He looks immature. This was the same guy that when the prophet came, hallelujah, looking for who to become a king, he was forgotten. They say he's the youngest of them. If we're looking for king, uh, uh, David cannot be one of them because he's the least... <laughs> After the prophet, amen, you know, I looked at everyone and God had rejected everyone. All of them, God rejected them. Sorry, no, 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 no. <laughs> the prophet had to ask a question. Uh, uh, Jay said, are these all your kids? Are these all your children? I said, well, there's the, 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 the last one, they, you know, the last born, you know, he, he's just out there playing with the sheep. <laughs> the prophet said, go fetch him. We're not going to sit down until he comes. 
You see, the ways of God are not our way. I just, I just showed you that scripture where we started. Amen. God's ways are not our way. Let me, let me highlight that, that, that scripture again. Where is it? All right. It says, God's ways are not our way. His thoughts are not our thoughts. That's it. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Don't think, hallelujah, when, when we think leadership, don't ever assume, all right, that the way we look at leadership, the way we select leadership is the same way God approves leadership. No, it's not. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth and the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, say the Lord. They say, go fetch him. They brought David. The moment Amen Samuel sighted David, he knew that's the king. Wow. A boy king. <laughs> Nobody in the house of Jason. You understand? In fact, the house of Jason was not a royal house. You know, back in the days, you know. They've got families where, you know, royalty comes from. But guess what? It was God who said, go to the house of Jason. It was God who said, amen, to, you know, to the prophet Samuel, go to the house of Jason. There I have found for myself a king. I found, amen, a man after my own heart. He was still a young boy when God called him a man after my heart. Are we getting something here? It's important that we get this principle. Let me round up. We want to be vessel. We want to see change in our land. We have to apply the principles of God. God said, Gideon, go pull down the altar, your father's house, and the astral pole. It is through that principle that we will begin to talk about change and reform and deliverance. It's the same thing God is saying to us today as a nation. As this nation gets ready, all right, to go into this period of election, we have to understand that there's a different, there's another type of election, hallelujah, that we have to engage in the spirit. Come on. There's a different kind of election that we have to, hallelujah, yes, approve in the spirit. We have to, yes, you understand, we have to come together, hallelujah, and vote out the powers, the principality that have been left, all right, to continue to define, to rule, to regulate, amen, the influence and the lifestyle of this nation. We have to vote them out. We have to take our position in the realm of the spirit. We have to, hallelujah, <clears throat> hallelujah, engage the prince of the past of the air over this realm. And to, for us to do that, we have to take the position, hallelujah, of a priest. As we stand even as kings, that, that position, that influence of a king, king priest order, God has made us kings and priests. This is the time, amen, where we need to wear the effort even as we put on the crown and take the scepter, hallelujah. We have to be able to stand and declare in the name of Jesus. We rise up, hallelujah, and we say, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Hashem does be lifted up. We have to usher in the kingdom, the glory, and the power of God. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory over South Africa. Lord, we invite you come invade the land when you begin to do that things in the natural human realm will begin to shift it, it will look as if there's a coup <laughs> people that we, 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 you, you, you'd have taught yes these are the people somehow mm -mm, rejected removed God put his own there you see I keep saying it and I'll say it again the destiny of this nation is bigger than a man, is bigger than one party, is bigger than certain group, is bigger than certain narrative, is bigger than certain lobby group. You've got to understand that God is the one in charge. And when we pray and trust in him, we will see him move in the land. What do you believe? 
what do you believe? Do you believe in what God can do? Do you believe that God can bring a change? Do you believe that God can transform? God can reform? Do you believe that God can change the heart of people? I know in all the parties there are good people. Regardless of what we see or think. They just need to be rightly aligned. They just need, amen, yes, to be ministered to. And you know, God knows how to do that. God knows how to, amen, invade their bed in the night. (laughs) The Bible says, you know, uh, 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 God appeared to the the king. Which king was that now? Uh, I think it was one of those countries, you know, when, uh, uh, you know, Abraham went there and the king, you know, took Sarah, wanted to, you know, you know, go, go sleep with her and, and God appeared as if you, I'm going to kill you. The wife of, you know, uh, uh, Herod, in the night, was it Herod or Pilate? In the night had a dream. So, Make sure you don't do anything to this man. He's a righteous man. God has a way of invading people's in the night. People's dream, people's vision in the night. God has a way of touching people. If we do the right thing. If my people were called by my name. We can pull down the high places. But that is going to take a commitment. A trust. A readiness of heart. A willingness, amen. A dimension of men and women who are not ready, amen, to give up. Who are willing, amen, to submit and surrender themselves, amen, to what God wants. So I ask you again, what is the vision of God for this land? Whatever we believe is God's vision must reflect righteousness. Righteousness is the definition of justice. We can't have justice if there's no righteousness. So are we ready to see a change? It's time to pull down the struggle, wrong belief system, powerful condition of thinking and reasoning that negates the ways of God, the will of God. Attitudes we have imbibed and accepted as you know, the right pattern of life. God says, no, it's not, I'm not going to accept that. God has a plan and a purpose for every society. God has, amen, a desire, a definite desire and intention that, amen, he wants every nation to carry out. If you look at the book of Revelation, the Bible says on that day, nation, tongues, and tribe, hallelujah, will give glory. They will sing a new song unto the Lord. We have to begin to engage the spirit of reformation over the land. The spirit of transformation. We have to lift up every party, every man, every woman, all right, that will be out there seeking to converse for the soul of this land. Amen. Seeking to have a seat, a position of power and influence over this land. We have to pray that God, amen, will arrest them that they will do the bidding of God. That's how we have peace. That's how we bring peace into the land. That's how we bring, amen, yes, prosperity. Because prosperity belongs to God. Healing belongs to God. Deliverance belongs to God. All of these things that we want for society, amen, as in progress and development, these are all things that God gives. That's why I say, seek me first. Seek me. Seek me first. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. To seek the kingdom of God means to seek the government of God. A kingdom is a government. A kingdom defines, hallelujah, rulership, amen, governance, you understand, administration, justice, equity, peace, righteousness, prosperity. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We have to have a right standing with God, not religion. We have to have a right standing with God, not traditions of men. We have to have a right standing with God. Not one, amen, that have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Let's cast down the altars, amen, the high places. Let's bring them down, amen. Let's rise up, you understand, as a Davidic company. Let's rise up as a Gideon company, amen, unafraid. 
who goes to war, hallelujah, with lanterns and trumpets. That's how God used, amen, the armies of Gideon to, to, you know, to, to root out, to destroy, you understand? Yes, the armies of the enemy. Their weapons were lanterns and trumpets. Oh, come on, friends. Lord, we align our hearts. We yield ourselves. We submit ourselves to your wisdom, to your knowledge, to your understanding, to your counsel. We take our position and we declare it's a brand new day. We speak the spirit of reformation. We speak the spirit of justice, truth, and equity. We speak the spirit, yes, of healing, deliverance. We proclaim and we say, this day, your glory is upon the land. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. We rebuild. Like Nehemiah, we rebuild. Like Ezra, we rebuild the altar. Like Nehemiah, we rebuild the walls. We rebuild the bond gates. Lord, like a Davidic company, we begin to build a place called the city of David. We declare the name of Jesus. Like, like Elijah, we rebuild, oh God, on this mountain called Mount Carmel. We bring to judgment the spirit, yes, of Jezebel. We declare your kingdom come. Lord, we declare that the blood of Jesus cleanse this land, wash this land. Not the blood of bulls and goats. Not the blood of human sacrifice. Not the blood of some animal sacrifice. No, we declare the blood of Jesus that had been shed on the cross 2,000 years ago avails and prevail over the land. As we pray for this land, we pray for every continent. We pray for the continent of Africa. We pray for every nation. Yes, Lord, upon the earth. We declare it's a brand new day. Change has come. Renewal, reformation. Yes, this is what we speak. This is what we declare. We declare change. God Almighty, we ask for change. Move over this land. Let your glory once again sweep through this land. We bring down the dark prince. We bring down, we cast down every high thing that exalts itself above your will and counsel. We declare in Jesus' name that this land, oh God, will be proclaimed a place of righteousness, a place of peace, a place of justice, a place of equity, a place of prosperity, a place of healing and deliverance. In the name of Jesus, we declare, Lord, let the water of your spirit begin to flow. Let it bring cleansing. Let it bring change. Let it bring deliverance. Yes. He said, when we ask, it shall be given unto us. We ask of you, O God, for this land. Give us, O God, a nation, O God, whose heart seeks you, longs for you, desire you. We pull down the spirit, O oh God, of entertainment and the spirit of, of religion and tradition. We pull down, we refuse, O oh God, that which sound that looks like you, but alas, is not you. We refuse, O oh God, the lie, the fake. We refuse, O oh God, the false. We declare that the truth is what we want because it's the truth that sets us free. We seek your truth. We seek your ways. We seek your plans. We seek your desire. Lord, move in our land. Move in this nation. Move over this realm. Give us men after your heart. Give us leaders after your heart. Give us leaders after your heart. Lead us with a heart of integrity, yet with skillful hands, oh God. That's what we ask for. This is what we desire. This is what we seek for, oh God. Oh God. This is what we seek for. This is what we pray for. Lord, sweep through the land in your righteousness. Move through the land. Heal our nation. Heal our people. Heal the heart of the young and the old. Heal the heart of the young and the old. Heal the heart of the young and the old, oh God. Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. 
Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Father, for everyone that has tuned in this evening. Everyone watching, wherever they are watching from. I just pray, oh God, that the same spirit, oh God, that is upon this declaration will flow into their life. Lord, that they will become vessels for you. They will become voices for you. They will become instruments for you. Oh God, that you will align them to their true prophetic mandate and calling. Lord, that as they stand, oh God, to represent you, their prayer will become instrument, oh God, to shift, to change, to bring forth, to heal, to restore, to deliver a people in the name of Jesus. Lord, as you found David, you will find them. You will use them as you find Ruth, Esther, Deborah. You will find them, oh God. As you found Gideon, you will find them, oh God. Instrument for the glory of God. I pray that right now the Spirit of God will calibrate your sight, will give your heart that is burning for the intentions and the purposes of God. Yes, that you will run and not be weary, but rather you will be skilled, you will be built up. You will charge against as David charged against God. Goliath, you will charge against every giant. You will not be afraid because the Lord is with you. He said, Lord, I am with you till the end of the age. You will walk and not faint. I declare in the name of Jesus right now that all that you need to be equipped to become instrument and voice in this new day is yours in the name of Jesus. I declare you will not be afraid of their face. You will not be afraid of their height. You will not be, you will not be afraid of their influence, but you will know that there is a God that backs you that is with you in the name of Jesus. You will know that you are surrounded by the chariots of fire. I declare in the name of Jesus that is well with you. You're strong in the Lord. You're strong in the Lord. You're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Resources I declare upon you in the name of Jesus. Rise up. Don't lose heart. Don't lose faith. Don't be discouraged. Be strong in the Lord. I declare as our guy, yes, was sent to, to, to encourage, yes, the people. I declare you are encouraged. Be strong. Be strong. Let your arms be strong in the name of Jesus. Go forth in the might of the Lord. Let the will of God be established in your life. Let your purpose let the purpose of God be awakened. Yes, be steered in your heart. Be burdened. The zeal of the Lord, let it fall upon you so that you will fulfill all God's intentions for your life. In Jesus' name, you will be recognized. You will go for the Lord. You will be a vessel to be reckoned with. Yes, as you walk, you will bring forth the presence of God in the name of Jesus. Healing is your portion. Deliverance is your portion. Yes, provision is your portion in the name of Jesus. Transformation, reformation is your message in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Friends, thank you so very, very much once again for joining me this evening. I uh, want to thank God for, once again, the utterance that heaven has given to us. And we've spoken to certain dimensions and we believe that changes, amen, are already taking place. Please continue to pray, continue to stand and continue, amen, to proclaim and declare the coming of the kingdom of God. Thank you so very much, everyone. Have yourself a wonderful evening if you're, of course, watching from this part of the world. Don't forget, amen, we can reimagine possibility. Change, hallelujah, is taking place over the realm, over the, over the sphere, hallelujah. We proclaim it in every area of our national life, amen, of our community life, of our homes and family. Continue to move in the powerful, amen, wisdom of apostolic engineering. God bless you all. I'll see you again, hopefully tomorrow morning. God bless you. Good night.